Well, we got our first, I guess, snow of the year. Tent's looking good. Look how good the tent looks. We've had all that ice and snow down here and it just looks fantastic. You ready to get in there, buddy? Get a fire going? Yes. So we can see it built up over here. This is interesting. Oh, let's go check that out. So there's some snow and ice accumulated over here and I almost busted it, but you can see this side over here has not, oh my goodness, look at that. Watch out, bud, don't get wet. Look at this big sheet of ice and we got man down. So we gotta address this. This is all ice stuck over here. I'm really surprised to see that actually, but there's all ice down here. So you can see where water did accumulate. It didn't do this with the rain. Man, that dirtied it up. All right, where all the ice is, is where my stove is. You just take that up, roll it up, inside through the hole where's he at where's the big man right here oh he's over there we got out here a little bit later than we wanted to got to get the stove on sun is down i mean we have a beautiful sunset i'll actually turn it and see if we can see that but i keep my stove pipes back here so i'm going to put them in and we're going to get a fire going i mean look at that isn't that beautiful I've never done it exactly like that. The only, the other times I put the whole thing in at once, that was at the full extension. Gonna get a fire going. So like Devin, we have lights that go all the way around ours. I mean, all the way up the door. And essentially it went all the way around, went up to the top and then back down. I mean, isn't that just so cool from outside? I think it looks awesome. There's, so my portable toilet tent thing is right there. It normally goes there, but again, we got in late and we don't really need it. So looks so cool. I left the front door open so you can kind of see what that looks like. There's the moon. It's a beautiful night. But that's what it looks like at nighttime. Oh, it's a gorgeous morning. It's probably about 30 degrees. Um, we slept great. My son slept real great. I mean, did not wake up at all. We were so warm. We, uh, it wasn't, it just didn't feel that cold. So we kind of let the fire go out and, um, in the stove, which is a whole other topic. I've, I've struggled with this stove. I hate to admit it, but I have. And just dialing it in. I think I know what my problem is when I'm being lazy while I'm building it. And I'm gonna do a separate video on it in case others are struggling with it in the same way that I am or have uh, struggled with it in the same way that I am. But my son and I are gonna get up. We're gonna run to town because we gotta buy some corn. So um, we're being lazy. This was a quick trip, took a uh, real light, didn't bring. We picked up food on the way down here and that's why I didn't film anything for dinner. And I uh, brought stuff for coffee, but I let the fire die. So we're going into town. So I'm gonna cheat and get a coffee, but beautiful morning. I just, I can't say enough about these tents. Like I woke up this morning and I'm just looking up and I'm like, it's amazing. This tent's been up for months now and it is dry. I mean, there was ice on it. There's still ice on the, on the platform. It's like, it really is like a second home, which is cheesy. And you know, but every time I'm in there, all I think about is how people used to live full time in, you know, teepees and tents and, uh, I would love to have gone in like an authentic one back in the day to see how it was set up and uh, and how they did things, you know? Like this, I, I slept in a, in a huge canvas tent on an elk hunt in 2009, army green tent, and it was so dark and dingy in there. And that's always what I kind of had envisioned and thought of when I thought of canvas tents. And uh, 
we got this one it's just so light and bright inside and i just i really just cannot say enough it's such a cool experience and when i get this stove dialed in and figured out uh it's going to be a completely uh completely new experience and probably a lot more enjoyable although like i said i mean i'm wearing a t-shirt and a very light columbia jacket right now it feels awesome so anyways, we're gonna run in town, get some corn. We'll come back, uh, we'll probably do some exploring. All right, we just ran into town, picked up some corn. Whoa. We are gonna unload that. We're pretty much parked on ice right now. Uh, so my son is flipping and flopping and sliding around. So last year, when we got some snow and ice, there's our creek crossing, future creek crossing, where we get to the north side of our property. And there's kind of an ice slide that was made. So we're gonna go check that out in a minute. And if it's there, well, uh, my son's gonna go sliding down it and we're gonna do some exploring. So I'm gonna unload this corn, get out the four-wheeler and uh, we're gonna do that. And then we'll go look at some stuff in the tent. We have a new way to spread corn. Do it the way you were just doing it. <laughs> Having this little carabiner with this little cable is crucial. We're standing over here next to the, uh, between the kitchenette and where we slept last night. And I mean, I'm 6'2"-ish. And you know, my head's hitting right here. But this tent is so spacious, it's unbelievable. Like this is a queen size tri-fold mattress, that's a full. You could fit four of these in here, you'd be, you'd be you know, congested um, with the stove and the kitchenette. So our sleep system is a little bit different than the way that Devin and his family are doing it. They did cots, which is great because you can use the cot as a chair. Um, but we had a tri-fold full mattress that we used in the bed of my truck with the uh, Ridgeline tent. And we really liked it. It's so comfortable and insulated that we went ahead and got a queen also. You know, we have our five-year-old right here and then we have a two-year-old at the house. So when we all came out here, uh, I believe he and I slept on the queen. My wife and daughter slept in the full. It just makes it easy to make sure everyone's nice and cuddled up and warm. But Devin made a great point and with the sleeping bags, we went with like a cotton sleeping bag because they're not loud. And I had not even considered that. It was such a good point that he, and they are heavy. You're not gonna go backpacking with this, but for this sort of setup, they are money. Really great. And you slept good, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he didn't wake up at all. Uh, he slept great. Several times during the middle of the night, I woke up and looked at him and he was, you know, had his arms behind his head, just really relaxing. We did get a table that we really like we don't have chairs that fit with it, which is hilarious. Um, so once we get all that set up and uh, wife approved, we'll, we'll show you that. A couple other things. One, we got a coat rack, which it was a great idea. I think Devin just casually mentioned getting a coat rack and I said, yes. So I got like a kid size coat rack and it's perfect just to help keep things um, organized and tidy. But we have this little, uh, you know, I guess self-composting toilet that has been great. Now we don't use it in the tent, but we're just not using it because it's just he and I out here last night, but it's awesome. So you basically fill up this top part with water. You drop a little pod in there, which helps break, break everything down yeah. and reduces the smell. And then you pump this to flush. Now when you flush, you want to make sure everything is, is shut, but there's a valve over here that you can open up you know, the, the hole that feeds down into the, where the nastiness goes, and then you can flush it. And when we stayed out here as a family, it was used for everything. And uh, we, we use the, uh, the toilet paper that's meant for like RV toilet paper. I'll link to it below, I don't remember. But it disintegrates and breaks down real quickly. Well anyways, after we use this that weekend, um, inside of the, the you know, portable restroom tent, when I went to go dump it out, I mean, you take this thing apart and there's just a, and you dump it out and I'm telling you, zero smell. 
like zero smell it was it was unbelievable so there's a lot of <laughs> yeah if you're considering some sort of you know toilet um where you know the pods that come with it are apparently great for the environment there's no harsh chemicals you can kind of dump it anywhere sort of situation um within reason obviously this thing was great i have the solar panel plugged in the 100 watt solar panel thunderstruck or whatever it's called from harbor freight it is 10.05 and I'm drawing 43 watts. So as you can see, we have our solar panel right there going through the pocket, producing that wattage. You know, here's one that's moved a little bit now that I notice it. So that would be a, you know, a benefit of putting that, drilling that hole and keeping that steady. All right, so we can see on Devin's tent, same way. We both have a lot of buildup of ice and then he has some on his overhangs as well and i am standing on <laughs> I'm, tr I'm trying to position myself where i can record this while i pull this off all right here we go up north you probably think this is ridiculous like i'm excited that the pond is frozen but for us down here we think this is super cool all right, there might be enough on the ice slide. There he goes, a little bit. <laughs> this is one of our favorite little creeks. It always looks cool when there's snow and ice. Exploring, and about a year ago, Devin and I were walking through this creek bottom. And I think it's right up here. There's this flat area that is basically surrounded on three sides by the creek. And it looks like a really, really neat camping spot. I think that's where it's at. So we're gonna go take a look. Yeah, so I think this is it. So you have the creek over my shoulder. Then you're, then you're kind of in this little bottom right here. Uh, yeah, man, this, you can't tell. This is totally flat, but the creek runs right around the edge. Then we just have this creek that just drops off. That's where we just were, buddy. That, that goes around. I don't know if you can tell, but yeah, so there's a, a mound all the way around, completely blocked from the wind down here. This is super cool. We're going to have to clear a spot and camp down here for sure. A good set of tweezers are so crucial out here with kids. That finger feel better now, buddy? Yeah. It's a cool little spot. Walking down this other creek. It was flat. And we're back. It's about 12.08 and we're back to 100%. All right, before you leave, there's a few things you gotta do. For one, remove your pipe and close that. I did not do that once and it was left open for like five days. Not only did the top of my stove start to rust a little bit, but my niece made a good point. She's like, what if a bird would have gotten in there <laughs> or an animal? That would have been an absolute mess. So you gotta do that. Remove your pipe, store your pipe away. You have to clean out your stove for sure. You don't wanna leave all that in there. The main things that I wanna do is I wanna sweep up inside, take out my ashes, remove the stove pipe, close that, and then take all of my wood out and store it, the wood that I didn't use throughout the night. So um, we're gonna do that. I'm gonna make sure all my guy lines are tight. Um, Devin has one issue. I need to find a zip tie and fix something for him. And then we're gonna load up and, uh, and roll out. So thanks for sticking with me uh, for this video. All right, bye-bye.
this Velcro is shut as well as zips, but I've put a carabiner down here just to hold the two together, just because one time it was super windy and they ended up opening up. So something to consider if you have a belt tent. 